Hey everyone, it's Jacob from Martin's Woodworking. And today I'm going to show you how I made this headboard out of leftover hardwood flooring. Today's video is part three of the bedroom series build if you've been following along. And now the bedroom is finally starting to come together. You might be wondering why there are some French cleats on the wall. Well, that's for part four and they will end up being some bedside shelves. But for now, let's get to the headboard and figure out why these come off. In true DIY fashion, this project was made from all leftover material. The three quarter inch hardwood flooring was left over from when the flooring was put in, and my dad was nice enough to let me use a piece of leftover three eighth inch zip board from his shed. I started this headboard by measuring out and breaking down a piece of plywood using my circular saw. My measurements were 60 inches wide and 2 feet 10 inches tall. I made sure to keep my straight manufacturer edge where I wanted the top of the headboard to be, as this will make sure that I have an even overlap when I get to that point. The final size of the headboard with the hardwood flooring would be 64 inches wide and just over 2 feet tall. This will fit a queen size bed. The plywood was cut extra tall to allow me to attach the headboard to the wall, as this will be a free floating headboard. I cut two notches on the side on the bottom of the plywood, as this will be the part that is below the bed frame and screwed into the studs. Don't worry, we will be attaching screws at the top of the headboard too. I have a little trick that I will show you later on how we do this. In total, we will have four screw points. Next, I took the plywood to the bedroom to measure out the spot for the outlet. Now you are able to see and understand how I cut the plywood out. I'm using thin plywood for this project because I didn't want the headboard sticking too far out from the wall as this will interfere with the bedside shelves that I will be making in the next video, so stay tuned for that. But with the plywood being behind the hardwood flooring and making an overhang on all three of the exposed sides, it will look like the headboard is almost floating. I think this will turn out pretty neat. I made sure to take my time measuring out for the outlet but it's going to be hitting below the bed and the mattress so no one should see it anyway. Here I just used a jigsaw to cut out the spot for the outlet and like I mentioned earlier I wasn't too concerned about being exact because this will be hidden beneath the bed. Here I'm just getting my pieces of hardwood flooring out to get a visual of what I'm trying to accomplish. But before I get ahead of myself I need to paint the lower section of plywood to match the color of the wall. I decided to use the green side of the zip board thinking it would kind of act as a primer and not soak up so much paint allowing me to only do one coat. I made sure to paint all the edges that would potentially have a chance of being seen allowing the paint to dry overnight and starting back up the next morning. To start the next day I began making marks all along the plywood to give me some straight lines to reference off of. I used my tape measure and measured down from my straight edge, measuring every few inches from where I knew I wanted to start my first row of hardwood flooring. I used a chalk line to make straight lines, but a straight edge and a pencil would work fine. I laid out some pieces of hardwood flooring to see how many rows I would need to get the overlap correct on the top. You can see that the hardwood floor will extend past the plywood on the top creating the reveal I want. Since this is going to be really hard to record and show you what I'm doing underneath, I'll show you an example. I'm going to drill from the bottom into the flooring. Not too deep, you don't want to poke a hole through it. Then I'm going to take my screw and then my flooring will be stuck. Now it's time to get the first row of flooring attached. This is the most important row because if this row isn't straight, the rest won't be straight either. I'm using some clamps to help me hold the boards in place as I drill pilot holes and attach the screws from the bottom. I'm making sure to attach at least two screws into each piece of hardwood flooring to prevent it from moving at all while I flip the board over and attach more screws. No, I didn't use any wood glue. The reason being is I wasn't sure if I would ever want to reuse this hardwood flooring for a different project in the future, so I just put in a lot of screws. If you want to use glue, there is one section on this project where you cannot use wood glue if you are following my exact steps, but you will see this later in what section I'm talking about. I'm continuing to attach the next rows of flooring, repeating the same process underneath, drilling pilot holes into the plywood and hardwood flooring, being careful not to drill too deep and poke a hole through the beautiful hardwood floor. 
As I attach more rows, I'm keeping one side all lined up straight and overlap two inches. So I have a reference edge for the final measurement and I only have to cut off excess on one side. This row right here is going to be my last row. But then we will cut this stuff off right here, this excess. Might be able to see, this is where the board stops. We'll have two inches over. So all of this will be excess. And we'll use that excess up here for the next two rows. I'm attaching the final row before I cut off my excess, repeating the same steps as before. I'm not going to be able to use all the cutoff pieces simply because of how the tongue and groove system works, but I'll be able to choose a few starter pieces for my last two rows. Now you see me measuring out the final dimensions of 64 inches. I'm putting down blue tape to make my cut line on and help protect the flooring when I drag my circular saw across it to make the cut. I should have cut from the back side of the flooring to prevent the chip out that you will see, but I always forget that the circular saw cuts up and through the wood so that the top side has potential to chip out. So when cutting with a circular saw, if you want to try to prevent chip out, make sure that the good side is down and you're cutting from the back side of the wood and use tape. Tape is a good way to help minimize chip out. I just used my level as a straight edge and some clamps to hold the level in place and then I made my cut. All right, I have the final two rows measured out, not put in place. This is how I will have it. And why I have it like this is so this piece will not be attached. So I can screw into this piece, into the studs, and then just slide this in perfectly. And the issue I had was just trying to make the seams not be right on top of each other. And then on this side, be the same concept. Oops. Have a little room to screw into some studs, hopefully. Piece of side right in. And it'll look like a complete wall. But when I want to remove it, I'm able to. I used a miter saw to cut the last two rows to size. I wanted to keep this project to a minimum on tools used. I just wanted to use a drill, drill driver, and a circular saw. But I used a jigsaw, miter saw, and a table saw also. But you do not need to use all these other tools. I could have just as easily cut out the spot for my outlet using a circular saw. It just would have been oversized, but that's not a big deal because it's hidden. And to cut the final row to length, I could have just used a circular saw and a speed square to make my cuts square into length. And the step with the table saw is completely optional. To figure out my cut line, I attached one side and then put my piece into place and I used a speed square to mark out the line. And then I cut it on the miter saw, came back and attached the last of the pieces. On the top and final row of the flooring for the headboard, I cut off the bottom groove on the back side of the flooring using the table saw. I did this because I didn't have a border around this headboard and this created a cleaner look making it look like it was floating. I attached my middle section of flooring first on this final row. This is the only section that is actually attached to the plywood. The two side sections will not be attached with screws. They are removable and allow me to screw the plywood onto the wall into the studs to hold up the headboard. This is the section where you cannot use glue. And this is what the finished product will look like. I went into the bedroom and began finding the studs and marking them out with painter's tape. It's just easier for me to see than a pencil mark. I also marked out on the sides approximately how high I needed the headboard to be off the ground in relation to the bed frame and the mattress. I took my time finding all the studs and making sure everything was marked where I thought the headboard would line up. I called my brother in to help me install the headboard to the wall because this now seemingly light piece of 3 8 inch plywood is now really heavy with all this 3 quarter inch flooring attached to it. What he did was pre-drill some pilot holes and then attach 2 and a half inch screws to hold everything into place, making sure to countersink the screws as he drilled to allow the extra pieces of flooring to attach flush to the plywood. My job was to hold the headboard level as he attached it to the wall. We attach screws to the top of the headboard where the green section is exposed 
as well as on the bottom where I had painted the green section blue to match the wall. Here I'm adding the last two pieces of flooring using the tongue and groove system. These pieces will not be screwed in and now you can see how it goes together. To finish the headboard off, I added some stain around the edges in a dark walnut color to match the rest of the flooring. This would have been ideal to apply before hanging up the headboard, but I had to get it hung up while I had someone around to help. I just used an old clean sock to apply the stain and wipe off the excess after it soaked in for a while. I'm very pleased with how this headboard turned out. The flooring is beautiful and goes very well with the blue walls in my opinion. I love how the overhang on the flooring gives the headboard a floating effect. Thank you for following along as I build out this bedroom. I've queued up a few videos for you to watch if you're interested, and thanks again for watching.